Welcome to It's Arlene here. It is Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. Glad to be back here with all of you. If you are new, welcome. If you are returning, welcome. I so appreciate, um, I love this community, this floss tube community of sharing our love and our interests and our passion. And I know there are so many floss tube videos you could be watching out there. So I appreciate that you're here with me. This video is basically devoted to sharing some new releases. I am a designer. I design under the name Works by ABC. You can find me on Etsy. Uh, also through your LNS, ONS stores. Uh, I'm distributed through Hoffman, so they have the ability to get my, my patterns to you wherever it is that you shop, or you can buy them directly from me on Etsy. Um, there is a big needlework online um, shopping opportunity coming up in a couple of weeks. It is a wholesale. I'm going to explain that, but before I jump into it, a huge thank you for those who have heard my pleas <laughs> the last couple of videos um, to help me rack up view, viewing hours. Um, I, uh, you may or may not be aware that um, to be monetized on YouTube, yes, it means that you can earn money. And as I understand it, it can be just pennies, <laughs> um, but it is an opportunity to control commercials. It used to be, when I first started FlossTube, um, YouTube did not have commercials uh, on your videos if you weren't monetized. Well, they changed that. And the last six months or so, I've had more than one person comment about the number of, of commercials. And I've tried to make it really clear, I have no control over that because I'm not monetized. To get monetized, I need to up my viewing hours. Um, I've created a playlist of all my videos, like you could just hit play and go do something in another room. Thank you to those who helped up my hours. I think I'm almost there, but I'm not sure how long I need to sustain it. Anyway, if you can help me out, that would mean I can monetize. I don't care about the pennies I could earn. It's about being able to control not having commercials in the middle. Um, I know people who have like the YouTube um, streaming service, they can get, they don't have to watch commercials. I mean, there's commercials are just varies from one person to another. So if you've been helping me with that, thank you. I look forward to getting to the point where no one has to deal with commercials, at least when they're watching my videos. So Needlework Marketplace is an online shopping opportunity that is happening in a couple weeks from uh, August 25th through the 28th. It is only a wholesale market, which means re general stitchers cannot purchase. It is meant for stores to purchase and then have brand new patterns, designs, I suppose threads and fabric and other things available to sell to their customers. It's like Nashville but it is online. You know, so much has changed in the world the last few years and to focus on some of the positive things have been an opportunity like this. This is an opportunity for designers who maybe for all number of reasons can't go to Nashville, money, logistics, time, all of that, um, but have the opportunity to interact with store owners and get their name out there, get their designs out there. And on the flip side, there are stores they can't travel to Nashville. Again, the logistics, the time, the money, but here is a way for them to be right on the cusp of getting brand new things. So I am looking forward to it. I know if you follow Needlework Marketplace on Instagram, you'll start to see lots of things. Um, a lot of designers will send out an email to all the stores that are registered um, two to three weeks ahead of time. Um, my goal is to get mine out tomorrow. Uh, and so that's why you've started to see more and more things being posted if you've, wherever it is that you've been following along. Um, I am in this crazy, I feel very crazy. This is not a time of day I would normally be doing a floss tube. So I feel like I'm going to be rushing this, but I just need to. I was away this past weekend at a family um, event. I came back yesterday. I had a lot of students, I tutor, um, and a number of students today and a number of students tomorrow. And then Thursday morning, I'm leaving for uh, the Grace Notes stitching retreat. Um, it will be my first Re stitching retreat that I will attend. You know, that's not just like one day stitching with friends kind of thing. The first stitching retreat that I will attend that I'm not in charge of since October of 2019. Um, and I've joked with some of my friends of, I think I'm going to be sitting there and not know what to do with myself. Like not thinking in the, as I've shared with my own stitch NJ retreat, um, there's always thinking ahead, what's happening next? What do I need to prepare for? And little snippets of time stitching this retreat, all I'm supposed to do is sit there and stitch. 
Um, but I'm very much looking forward to it. But being away these two weekends in a row has kind of thrown me for a loop. So I'm trying to squish in a lot of things, um, which is to say, I hope I can get this video up today and I'm hoping I can get the email out to your, to the needlework stores. If you see anything here that you like, or frankly on any, um, floss tube video anywhere on Instagram, please be in touch with, um, your local stores or online stores, wherever you typically shop, they would be happy to get items for you. So I have five new releases for Needlework Marketplace, and I'm going to start with the first one, which shouldn't be a surprise because I've referenced it in the past. Um, I have a series, uh, a seasonal series, and I'm putting out the fourth and final season. This is my Autumn Biscornu stack. Um, uh, so I started with a winter one. The spring one was available at um, Nashville. I, the summer came out in May, and here comes Autumn. So three Biscornus. Um, top one says Autumn. Middle one says falling leaves. And here we have apple cider and pumpkin spice. Um, you could see there's stitching on both front and back, which is typical for Biscor News. Also typical that the stitching on the back is just like, um, you know, it turns into the sides when you make it into a Biscor New. If you have never made a Biscor New before, I suggest you, you know, watch a YouTube video on it. And hopefully you will see it is not as complicated to assemble as you might think. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's one of those too many times. I know I thought it the first time I saw one of these years ago. I'm like, that looks crazy. How are you going to put that together? Um, so I just encourage people to kind of think about that when it comes to a biscuit or anything else that at first glance looks like no way, not for me. And then you see maybe it could be for you. So this idea of a seasonal um, Biscornu stack actually started with a design that was in Just Cross Stitch in February. It was a February issue of 2023, and it was a Valentine's Day themed one. Um, but before that came out, I wanted to make sure I got my foot in the door, so to speak. So a winter one was out in Nashville spring, as I said, May was summer, and here comes autumn. Now I purposely did that kind of quickly because I'm wondering how many people were paying attention to see that they were different sizes. And I'm going to actually show them to you all at once here. One second. And you can definitely see they are all different sizes. However, they are all the same stitch count. They all have a large, that is, sorry, I can look at my notes, 64 by 64. The middle size is 48 by 48. The little one is 32 by 32. You can see they are all stitched on different color fabric that I'm hoping inspires you to think about the season. The winter was this sparkly, uh, you can sort of see the sparkle. Um, oh, I didn't talk details. So the Autumn Biscorno was stitched on Weeks Golden, 30 count golden, using Weeks Carolina Cecile as the thread. And so you can see the, the similarity, solid fabric, solid uh, thread that goes throughout. They're all stitched on different fabric counts. This is a 25 count stitched over two, so it's like 12.5 stitches per inch. This is a 30 count, so like 15 stitches per inch. This is a 36 count, so 18 stitches per inch. And this is a 40 count, so 20 stitches per inch. But again, the same design size. And I don't know, maybe this doesn't interest everybody. I know it doesn't interest everybody. But if you've ever kind of mildly thought about the difference of fabric count, here's a visual of what it could look like, you know, when you stitch the same size, but on different counts. Um, and the other thing that I think is just it's kind of unique or whatever about this is that anyone who is looking at the four patterns, let's see if I can hold them up at the same time, would never know that the, that the models are different sizes. You know, I've, I've literally tried to recreate the same, you know, stack look, whatever you want to call it, for these patterns. 
Um, so it's only somebody who sees the models in person. And that just, it was something that evolved because I found the, actually the winter fabric that I loved and I knew I was gonna be using it. And when I started to look for other seasons, I couldn't find anything that was all the same and I didn't wanna do this. And, I, and then I came to the, wait a second, I don't have to do them all on the same size. Let me purposely do them on four different sizes. And that's what came to be. So Autumn Biscore New Stack is the final one of this seasonal series, and it will be available at the end of the month, a couple weeks at this point. Uh, next up is a mess here today, but bear with me. Uh, a new little design that I'm calling a trio of autumn flowers. Uh, this is a four by six frame. I stitched this on 36 count, so it's small, um, but I, need, I realize I kind of need to put into my repertoire some smaller designs. Um, and that's sort of what this evolved from. It actually evolved from two things. Number one, I want to start, I have started to use some different fabric and threads, always with, you know, DMC substitutions and all of that, um, just for variety. You know, and some of it is about meeting people, thread and fabric companies at Nashville and making connections and just wanting to explore new things. So this is stitched on a Grace Notes fabric. And like I said, Grace Notes is the retreat I'm going to just this coming week. Um, I'd originally asked for a 36 count because I thought I knew exactly what I was gonna use this for. And then I totally didn't. Um, if I was doing this over again, I for myself might have done it in a 32 count. But as it is, this fits really nicely on just a standard four by six frame. I stitched this using Cosmo threads. Again, something that's new for me. You may or may not have started seeing more designs with Cosmo. Uh, Cosmo is a full line of threads. Here is their thread card, which makes it, you know, you can sort of see there, it, I mean, at first glance, you're almost like, oh, it looks like a DMC thread card. If you've seen more designers stitch or creating designs on it, it's, it's sort of, there's a chicken and egg thing when it comes to introducing something new. Cosmo, which is based out of Japan, really, my understanding, wants to make a market in the US. But stores are not gonna carry the threads unless there's designs that use the threads. But designers aren't gonna use the threads unless there's stores that carry the threads, chicken and egg. Um, Cosmo, in a very wise decision, um, offered threads to a lot of designers to encourage them to try designing and it had definitely been in the back of my mind I definitely wanted to do it um I am also I need to like do some kind of blind test for myself because like am I fooling myself or was it really like smoother to stitch with this thread it was beautiful thread um I did purposely pick out colors for this that had pretty good DMC equivalents actually each of these flowers is made up of three shades dark medium and light for lack of better words and i purposely found a, a you know a, a basic equivalent dark medium light using my dmc color card um so and it's clearly on there dmc as well as cosmo i just say this because i know what kind of stitcher i am or certainly before floss tube um I wasn't so adventurous. Some of it is logistics and money and how do you get those things? But DMC is like our common language. And some people want to try new languages. Some people love the new languages. Some people never want to go back to the common language. Um, but I often still do. Actually, I was list, looking at my list here and I'm like, wow, I basically did not use DMC for any of these five projects, which I think is like a new record for me. Um, so the Biscorn News, like I said, were stitched with weeks. And so this trio is Cosmo. The Grace Notes fabric is beautiful. I highly encourage you to check them out. Um, they were at Nashville, so there's definitely stores that have become aware of them. And in all honesty, you know, I loved this fabric. It's, it's coming through fairly well because it was a subtle over dye. And what I like about Grace Notes is they have the range. They have some subtle over dyes all the way through um, not so subtle over dyes. And depending on your project, depending what you like, you know, somewhere in there, you might find something that you, um, that really clicks with you. So I, the name of, they name a lot of their fabrics by 
names. So this fabric is called Kenneth. And um, I also had, well, I hadn't put them away yet. So this is the selection of Cosmo threads that I used. I mean, you could just see, all right, I'm hoping you look at that and say, okay, that's autumn. Because <laughs> that was the intention. So there you go. My uh, second design shared with you is a trio of autumn flowers. Ooh, and also in this thinking of mine, wanting to do a few more of smaller size designs. And that includes um, half size patterns. Not, not that the inside is smaller, but that when it's only like a one sheet pattern to start um, putting them into this size. Uh, for the first time, I was doing this for a couple things at Nashville. And I realized, you know, this is appropriate for some things like a small design. So trio of autumn flowers, just sweet little bouquet of flowers there. All right, next up, am I, I thought I created an order for myself and, um, well, I guess we're going in this order. I, I don't, uh, have a, how do I want to talk about this? There's a good story here. Um, if you know me, you know I like sharing good stories. Uh, Some time back, I was Google imaging something or another and somehow, you know, rabbit hole, get down. Okay. I can't even tell you exactly how I got to this, but I was on the Google Arts and Culture site, which basically pulls images from a lot of like museums and galleries and so on. And I saw this geometric thing that just grabbed me. And it was basically this picture. And it was a bowl of like a, you know, soup bowl. And when I say it was basically this picture, it actually was a different museum, the Hillwood Museum in the Washington DC area. And there was just something about it that just like the geometry mathematical side of me had me pause and like, could I do something with that in a stitching world? Fabric and thread, a, a graph, a chart. How could curves be a part of a design? And what I came to learn is, so this is a soup bowl that comes from a set or a commissioned set by an, commissioned by an empress in 1750 or so. As much as I could find out, there were only soup bowls, or at least I can't find anything other than soup bowls that are from this particular set from the Empress in 1750-ish, okay? This picture is actually from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It was just, the, the picture from Hillwood didn't print out as well as the one from the Met. So there are a few muse museums that have one of these soup bowls. Now, when I was searching along the lines of, well, if the soup bowl exists, you know, is there a dinner plate? Is there a teacup? Is, you know, is there a whole set? And I couldn't find the answer to that, but I found some interesting things. I found um, a few of like auction listings for five, eight thousand dollars for these soup bowls. I couldn't find an exact number of how many were in existence. But then I also saw some things that were like less than a hundred dollars. And I was like, well, what's, what, that doesn't make any sense. Well, I came to learn that there's a whole nother story to this. And as a part of that, I got myself a soup bowl. <laughs> so because the Metropolitan Museum of Art has one of these original soup bowls, um, the dates of this may be from the 1950s to the 1980s, somewhere in that. This is, I'm reading it, a reproduction of hard paste porcelain plate from the private service made for the Empress Elizabeth of Russia in St. Petersburg about 1760. So this was a commissioned by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I mean, it says it on here from Limoges, France, C.H. Field Haviland, to be a, a knockoff. I mean, it's no way claiming to be a 300 and something year old um, or not. 250 year old uh, plate, um, but they were selling it in the gift shop apparently for years. And so this is the thing that was showing up at quite the variety. I ended up getting this for like less than $30, but if you were to look this up and find auction listings for you know anywhere up to $100, it's not the real thing. It's one of these. Now the Met doesn't produce these anymore, but if I continued my going down a rabbit hole, the Limoges C.H. Field Haviland Summer Company in there um, had, does, and 
as I understand it, to this day, I could go online and buy a dinner set. And they do, they have created, you know, the dinner plate and the soup bowl and the serving bowls and all of that. And it's not quite the, um, well, you can, I, I might, I'll put a link just for anyone who's curious. Who knows? Maybe none of you are curious. You're sitting there thinking, Arlene, get to the stitching. Okay. So here's what I ended up coming up with. Um, I figure I do enough designs on white or off white and I had this fabric, which I'll talk about in a moment. And this fabric is basically the color of these flowers. Now, at first, this became just like a geometric challenge to myself. How could I turn a spiral into a graft, you know, piece? Well, to be clear, this is a design that is made up of not only cross stitch, but back stitching, as well as some Smyrna crosses, and there are beads involved. So if I hold it up close, hopefully you can see the white is, is back stitching, it's straight stitches. This, the green are cross stitches, but on top of the cross stitches are Smyrna crosses made up of gold and white. And then, I don't know if you can see in the center of those greens is a gold bead. When I started doing this stitching, I'm like, it, it, needs, it needs something, it needs something. And so this border I created around the edge is green um, with a petite treasure braid. Um, I, I love a good challenge. And when I was able to make this look like I wanted it to look, I was just so pleased. You know, I was, I was learning more about the geometry of it, like how to create it in general. Um, it's an interest of mine doing geometric um, constructions and doing this kind of stuff on paper. And so it was a natural for me to um, want to try it. And once I was able to figure out how it gets drawn, then how to turn it into this. Um, the other thing for those who are so curious, I also know that when I first saw the image, my brain did go to my math world and I wasn't crazy. I had seen something like this before in, and this is not the only place, but in my interest of things like the golden section in a book like this, this spiral, um, it's also what shows up in the center of like flower, like sunflowers. The scientific slash mathematical name of this is a phylotaxis. Like a phylotaxis pattern is what the center of, um, at least I think that's how you pronounce it, the center of a sunflower. Did I think phylotaxis was going to make a good name for a cross-stitch design? No. So wanting to give a hint on how what it's inspired by oops i meant to be holding this up <laughs> what i giving a hint for what was in, what inspired it i've called it royal swirl and i'm hoping that's enough for somebody to go like royal what which is what i talk about on the back sort of this connection um and man has it gotten me interested in looking at like plates and bowls and these kinds of things on museum websites that i hadn't necessarily before thought too much about as a source of inspiration but I now have a source of inspiration. I really enjoy doing this, um, both the planning it out and then the stitching of it and kind of figuring out as I went how to make it completely get the look that I was looking for. Um, logistics, this is stitched on a fabric flare, f fabric flare fabric. Uh, fabric flare was another company I met, um, one of the um, people at uh, Nashville. And I had it in my mind, and maybe you do too, that fabric flare was a, fabric flare was only sold in some like exclusive one way, and and that is not true. Um, not only were they at Nashville, you know, making connections, they also it also I also learned you anyone could go online. They sell direct to to customers to whole excuse me to retail, so you can go and order this fabric. You don't need to purchase it from one particular location. Um, if you're, if you buy things online, you can buy from Fabric Flare. What was actually, there's another Fabric Flare that I'll show you in a minute. This is one of their solid colors. Fabric Flare is printed. So if you are familiar with Zweigart's, you know, vintage country moga that a lot of people love, I love it. It's a printed fabric. One side is printed. It almost kind of looks like an over dyed or hand dyed fabric. The other side is plain. That's what Fabric Flare does. And they have so many kinds of fabrics. Actually, I don't think they're even really known for their solid colors. I, I wanted to give a try 
and I got this color because it appealed to me. And this was before I stumbled on this and it was like, well, that was meant to be. I stitch this with thread work threads. Again, another connection made, wanted to give them a try. Now, Threadworks, if you're not familiar with it, has quite a range, including a lot of threads that are um, very over -dyed. There's a name for it, when there's lots of colors put together in one thread, as opposed to the more subtle over -dyed, hand dyed. This green is definitely more one of their more subtle, meaning a DMC uh, substitution it's almost not going to look any different. Uh, same with the white. The white is ever so subtle, uh, but again, you might not even notice it. So as it turned, I'd like to play more with some Threadworks threads, do ones that show up a little bit more in terms of the variegation. But in terms of a, a thread to stitch with, I really enjoyed it. You know, I, I'd like trying new things. Again, with also acknowledging that not everyone does, and so there are good DMC equivalents, you know, on the back of this. So Royal Swirl, uh, paying homage to the fact that it did come from a royal dinner, not dinner set, what is the word? Royal Porcelain, um, and I, I love that I was able to create this. Okay, that, did I give the statistics of it? Thread, fabric, oh, the, the fabric name is called Blackberry. This solid color is called Blackberry, and it's 110 by 110. Did I share, the trio is 50 by 78. It's a good thing I wrote things down here, people. All right, number four, ah, is, uh, this was also on another Grace Notes fabric. Um, this one specifically when I was at Nashville and met them and I had been playing around with a, a design idea and I had just gotten threads from another room and I'm like, perfect, I'm gonna pick out a fabric that's gonna go with this project. Yeah, that project didn't come to be. It, it may in the future, but it didn't. But this fabric was so beautiful, I couldn't not use it. So I am calling this Starburst. Again, in terms of size, it is small. It is 69 by 69, so I'm doing it as a, a half size pattern. Again, the pattern is a full page. I'm just marketing it like this. Um, it's only four colors. Sorry, I just shook the table. It is only four colors, and to me, I think it packs a punch there. I don't know if you, okay. You could, if you're not a blue person, you could take any four colors, any color and use four shades of it. Uh, I stitch again, so this is a Grace Notes fabric. It's in black licorice. It's a 36 count. Um, and I stitched using Sulky because I wanted to. You know, you can choose any four colors of any color you like from any thread you like. I actually, this was a really interesting story because I was fully planning on using one of the Sulky, um, like multicolor ones. You know what I'm talking about. And, and then just using shades of that, and it didn't work. You know, it's a great example for me of why, at least at this point in my designing career, I can't use model stitchers because I don't think there's a single, of these things that I'm showing you, there, none of these I stitched, it ends up using the fabric, the thread, the pattern exactly as it was once I started stitching. Something changed, it's often thread. So, Starburst. I love it. It's again, thinking about needing to do some littles, uh, completely adaptable to a color that if you don't like blue, um, it, it, and again, only four colors of thread. It is 69 by 69. The fabric is called black licorice. And there you go. That's Starburst. And then the last of my five, um, if you are not familiar with me or my designs. Let me just share. I'm Jewish. I grew up Jewish and I put that into my patterns as appropriate, as need, not as needed, just as a piece to have out there because I know there is interest in that. And so last year for the end of August, the Needlework Expo that was happening then, I released a sampler that was actually stitched by a Jewish girl because it had a Hebrew alphabet in it. And I was brainstorming in my mind, I'd like to release something in that realm, um, there's Hanukkah designs out there and those come out, absolutely. There's also not that much else that is a seasonal kind of thing. Um, I have done a couple of Passover things, um, 
But September, October, depending on the calendar year, are some of the most important holidays in the Jewish religion. Now, it is not that you decorate. You know, people will decorate for Easter. People will decorate for Christmas. Um, so trying to revolve just around a holiday didn't quite connect work, make sense. But I realized something that did. So if you are not familiar with the word shalom, which you can see right here, it is a Hebrew word that means a number of things. It, the, the most straightforward translation is peace. But it is also used as a greeting, a hello and a goodbye, shalom. Um, there's some other ways it gets used, but it, it's the idea of peace. Um, this idea may be familiar. I did something with seasonal, similar like this. You see shalom, which is stitched in just DMC white. And it looks like just a geometric design that goes around it. But if you look carefully, it is the word shalom completely rotated around. Like if you follow the S's, what may at first glance have looked like a little curvy outside edge, it's a bunch of S's. When you turn it like this, you see shalom very clearly on each of the four parts. But doing this in white, so I stitched the white shalom using two strands. Um, so this is my other fabric flare design. The fabric is called navy hand-dyed. And it is like vintage country mocha. It is a printed fabric that is made to look like a hand-dyed fabric. And they have a number of colors of this. And I saw this navy and I thought, well, that looked interesting. And I really, can you all hear that? Oh, it stopped. I think it was a car alarm. Um, and I just liked the look of it. And it turned out to be perfect for this. So Shalom, it was 32 count. Did I say that already? No, it isn't. I take that back. It's 36 count. Um, two strands here and one strand, and I used Gentle Arts Shaker White. So it's like a subtle off-white, but just enough to make Shalom stand out and the other look like a geometric design. Now, this didn't feel like enough to me. Shalom is definitely a word that a lot of Jewish people, maybe even non-Jewish people might recognize. It's a greeting. It means peace. This is shalom in English. Sorry. This is shalom in Hebrew. So, um, as I remember talking a lot last year at this time when I was putting out that sampler and talking about the Hebrew, Hebrew is read from right to left. English is read from left to right. So this right here, is the first letter of the word shalom. And so notice the, the, the white, the, the whole word shalom is on the right side of this one, whereas the word shalom is on the left side. So they are basically, they, they are the same stitch count. However, because the Hebrew word shalom has fewer letters, there's more space there. I, I played around with this idea of filling it in and it just, it just didn't look good. Um, a little Hebrew lesson. This this letter here gives you the sh sound. This one right here gives you the L. The, the letter that ends is an M. And sort of this kind of acts as a vowel, the loam, the O sound. And the sha, the vowel of ah, is another, <laughs> usually not, vowels are often put underneath as dots and dashes and so on. But your mini little lesson is the sha, l, om. Um, these patterns, they come together, so it is it is a set. You would get both the Hebrew and the English. Recognizing some people would have no interest in stitching the Hebrew. Recognizing some people would have no interest in stitching the English. Um, I just think they make a nice set. They are, um, wait, I already said, that I'm so disorganized right now, I'm so sorry. I already said the fabric, the threads, the, oh, stitch count is 91 by 91. So they're not large pieces at all. And these frames are, do, 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 is it seven by seven inches? Just square frames that I was able to find. So there you go. Those are my five new releases. Um, again, I'm trying to squish this video in. I'm looking at the time and I got to get moving to my next thing. But I so appreciate you being here. If you see anything you like, please be in touch with a store. Tell them to order it for you. Um, they will eventually, the, all five of these will eventually be in my Etsy store a few weeks after the Needlework Marketplace. The idea is 
to give stores that extra opportunity to you know have things first not all designers do it the same way but many will keep the designs they put out at um, the needlework marketplace for let's say a month or so before they release them in their own other ways um, and i will be doing that the same as well I'll just say this, if you don't have a place to buy online or a store that you order from, I'll recommend, she's a friend of mine, Top Knot Stitcher Abby, I'll link her below. She has a great reputation in terms of Nashville and these markets in terms of great with pre-orders and getting things out there. So I'll put in my plug for her. Please support whatever needlework store you have, you use. Um, I just mentioned her if you are looking for someone. So. I hope you found something you liked here. Um, I, as well as every other designer out there, truly appreciate your support. Um, I like bringing new things and I'm glad I have this opportunity to share with you. These have all been in the works for the last few months and it kills me when I, I don't want to share until it's all done. So thank you so much for being here. If you can hit my videos on play repeatedly, help me build up some more hours, I would really appreciate it. You know the drill with YouTube, the hitting the likes and leaving the comments also helps greatly. I know there's so many floss tubes out there and I really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Till next time. Bye.